You know, as I look at these candidates, I think we have a number of good candidates on the Republican side. And by the way, I'm not a Marco Rubio hater like some people are. And I read some of the comments, even when I'm critical of him, way over the top. Way over the top. But I look at Obama, I look at his party, I look at the Republican leadership. I want to know what the Republican leadership is going to do for liberty. I want to know what the Republican leadership is going to do about border security. I want to know what the Republican leadership is going to do about the massive debt. They're not going to do anything about any of it, ladies and gentlemen. And let me tell you why. Because they threw away the power of the purse on day one under John Boehner, Mitch McConnell. They made it clear we're not going to shut down the government. When you tell Obama and the left you're not going to shut down the government, that means they're going to lard up the government. That means that more than the Constitution, more than the liberty of the people themselves, more than national security, more than border security, the existence of a massive centralized bureaucracy and funding every penny of it plus more is more important. So the Republicans threw in with the hard left, they threw in with the status, and now they're one and the same in this regard. Obama's not going to veto any budget. He's not going to veto any of these omnibus bills. He's not going to veto anything because he gets everything he wants. He gets everything he wants. There's only really one fix to this. There's only really one fix. It's not in the National Republican Party. It's not with the party elders. It's not in a Republican Congress. It's not even in a Republican presidency. And how many more Republican presidents have to put people on the Supreme Court who lurch left? Anthony Kennedy, Sandra Day, O'Connor. So many that I can't even keep track. Harry Blackman. Uh, good Lord. So there are no simple answers at the federal level. The federal government is the problem. The centralized government is the problem. The reason they can't do what they're supposed to do is because they do too much. And because there's too much politics. Of course Obama wants more and more Muslims coming into this country. He doesn't even care where they're from. He, uh, obviously the vetting is uh, Israel Bush League. Because we now know, Paul Bedard writes in the uh, Washington Examiner, 70% of them vote Democrat. That's all that matters. I've explained this to you before. The Democrat Party and the federal government are, in many respects, the same entity. The Republican Party, certainly we conservatives, we have no real representation in Washington. Even when we win elections, we have no representation. And the unelected branches, they just march on. The courts, the massive bureaucracy, do whatever the hell they want. So we don't live in a constitutional republic. We don't live in a federal republic. We don't live in a representative republic. We don't live under our constitutional system. We just don't. And yet the people who defend this, or the people who won't, who won't address it, who claim to be conservatives and constitutionalists, they're running around calling other people fascists and Hitlers. They don't even understand that they're the despots. They're the despots. Now, there's only one way, if it can be addressed at all. There's only one way to address this. And yet I see conservatives moaning and groaning about this. They just say, hey, let's win the next election. And that's our constitutional system. Our constitutional system has a fire alarm in it. You break the glass and you pull the alarm. And that fire alarm is under Article 5. And it's called Convention of States. Now, if you believe in state sovereignty, if you believe in federalism, if you believe in the Tenth Amendment, if you believe in Article 5, if you believe in the Constitution, if you believe in the framers, if you believe in the men at the constitutional conventions in the states that ratified the Constitution, if you believe in your history... If you believe in your heritage, then stand with me. Stand with me. Put the static aside. 
Put the static aside. Stand with me. The other talk show hosts won't talk about it. I'll talk about it. Stand with me on the Convention of States. Stand with George Mason. Stand with the framers of the Constitution. Stand with the ratifiers of the Constitution. Stand with the Constitution. There's a fire alarm and it's time to break the glass. It's called Article 5. More when I return. We never shut down because this show is essential. Call into the Mark Levin Show at 877-381-3811. Term limits for members of Congress. Do you know that is widely popular? Do you think Congress is going to pass term limits for Congress? Do you think Congress is going to pass a constitutional amendment, two-thirds of the House and the Senate, and send it to the states for ratification? Do you think Congress is going to do that? No, Congress is not going to do that. Do you think your states should have representation in the federal government, in the Congress, the way the Constitution was originally constructed, to ensure that at the state level there's some say in what goes on in the federal government? Many of us agree with that. Do you think Congress is going to propose an amendment to reverse the 17th Amendment? Do you think two-thirds of the members of the Senate who benefit from the current system, do you think they're going to do it? No. This was a progressive agenda item. And it's here to stay if we just leave it to Congress. Do you think Congress would propose an amendment to two-thirds of both bodies of the House and the Senate, to the Senate to the states, to term limit Supreme Court justices? Do you think Congress would actually step up to the plate and say that this judicial oligarchy must be addressed? And I'm not talking about in some radical way. I have proposed that Basically, the state legislatures, within a 24-month period of a majority opinion being issued by the Supreme Court, three-fifths of them can override that decision, not rewrite it, not amend it, but eliminate it. Why shouldn't three-fifths of the states have the final say rather than five justices? You can still a judicial review, but there's one more level of review. It's called federalism. Do you think the United States Senate, two-thirds of the senators or two-thirds of the House members, would propose a constitutional amendment as such? No, I don't think so. Do you think two-thirds of the Senator House, do you think they'd propose amendments limiting their ability to tax and spend? Which are two other items that I propose. Do you think they would do that? Of course they're not going to do that. They're going to spend us into absolute abject poverty. How about an amendment limiting the power of the massive federal government, requiring Congress to get into the mix before any regulation with a $100 million or more market value, having to go through a special joint committee of Congress, and if that committee, if that committee doesn't act within six months, the regulation is killed. Instead, we get these midnight or holiday regulations We wake up one day, we have these massive changes in our lifestyles and our livelihoods. We don't even know where they come from. Isn't it time to restore the legislative process? You think Congress will do that? Well, Congress hasn't. How about two-thirds of both the House and the Senate, the members there, ensuring that your private property rights are protected from regulators? From tax collectors. Do you think your Congress would do that? Of course not. And how about a change in the amendment of process? Grant the state's authority to directly amend the Constitution. I don't mean willy-nilly by some mere majority. The problem is, ladies and gentlemen, we have a President of the United States, one man with a pen, who's amending the Constitution. We have five justices on the Supreme Court, five people who are amending the Constitution. We have bureaucracies amending the Constitution. So-called independent agencies doing the same thing. How about we get a chance to address what they've done to bring it back to a republic with an amendment directly from the states? 
not having to go through Congress at all, or even a convention of the states. That's right. We're a supermajority, but not a super duper majority of the states can adopt an amendment. And how about an amendment to protect the voters? You see, the way the liberals explain things is any effort to protect the franchise, to actually make sure that the people voting have a right to vote, is perversely and conversely denying people the right to vote. We've allowed them to run away with this issue. Well, we shouldn't. No, we shouldn't. I call these the liberty amendments. There could be more, maybe less. I call them the liberty amendments. They will never come out of the United States Congress. There's two ways to amend your Constitution. It's been done 27 times officially, and each time uh, it has come from the United States Congress. Two-thirds of both houses, and then three-fourths of the states, or 38 states, legislatures, either either legislatures or by convention, have to ratify. The president has no role whatsoever. And yet there's another way, under that same section of the Constitution, Article 5, and the way it's done, it's reverse. Rather than Congress proposing changes, the states can propose changes. We're told this is radical. We're told we'll have a runaway convention of the states. We're told, no, 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 don't touch our Constitution. What Constitution? President by executive order is about to change the Second Amendment. What constitution? What are you talking about? You mean the one where John Roberts found Obamacare and directing you that you must purchase this or that or the other? He found that in the constitution? That's not in the constitution. How about the part where there's abortion? What is that written in a visible link? There is nothing about abortion in the constitution. How about same-sex marriage? That's not there either. How about this and that and that and this? Exactly. More and more decisions are being made by others and taken away from us. No, I don't believe in plebiscites and pure democracy and majority rule. That's not what the Constitution's about. It's about a representative republic. That's what it's about. And ensuring that the governed consent. Well, when's the last time that happened? They passed these massive omnibus spending bills. You have no idea what's in them. Neither do I. Massive education bills and highway bills. Thousands of pages long. A health care bill. Thousands of pages long. You and I never even got to read it. We never got to read it. And it affects us directly. They changed the financial system in this country. We never got to read that either. Our banks, our savings, our checking accounts. We don't know anything about it. We're told these are American values, letting people into this country who aren't vetted from parts of the world that are throwbacks, throwback parts of the world. We don't know who they are. We don't know why they're coming here. The government's so incompetent it can't vet them. And we're told if you don't accept what these elites in the ruling class are doing, then there's something wrong with you. That's un-American. And if you stand up and say something that they think is provocative, oh, you're Hitler and you're a fascist. Really? How about that? You're not going to find redress in the National Republican Party. You're not going to find it. Look at the pushback now. Look at the vile, hateful, poisonous attacks against any candidate who's not from their ranks, against any candidate who might challenge them, against any candidate who speaks the truth about their lies and their deceit. Look at them. They even have their own news outlet, a cable channel. Several cable channels, actually. I just want to remind you. I want you to go online or go to your library and look at the Constitution. I want you to pull up Article 5. No, this won't happen tomorrow. Could happen tomorrow if all of you would listen and embrace this. Could happen tomorrow if the other talk show hosts would wake up to this, but they don't give a damn. It could happen if the conservative movement would get behind this, if various think tanks would get behind this, if various websites would get behind this, if various candidates other than Mike Huckabee would get behind this, but they won't, and they're not. It's up to us. It's up to you and me. And rather than making things up, this is something that was given to us. 
This was something that was given to us two days before the end of the Constitutional Convention. September 15, 1787. In hot Philadelphia. September 15, George Mason. Alarmed that Congress would have the sole power to propose amendments. Continued to assist on state authority to call for conventions. Not constitutional conventions. A convention of the state. A meeting of the states. And Mason explained that an oppressive Congress would never agree to propose amendments curtailing its own tyranny. We have this directly from Madison's notes. And here's what Madison wrote down. Colonel Mason. Mason thought the plan of amending the Constitution exceptional and dangerous. In other words, the fact that Congress, and only Congress, could propose amendments that would affect Congress and the rest of the government, he thought was exceptionally absurd. Mason went on, according to Madison's notes, as the proposing of amendments is in both the modes to depend in the first immediately and in the second ultimately on Congress. No amendments of the proper kind would ever be obtained by the people if the government should become oppressive, as he verily believed would be the case. As he verily believed would be the case. So Mason stood up two days before the end of the Constitutional Convention. And he said in Mark's words, Hey, fellas, I know we're getting to the end of this thing. But this is absurd. The idea that the central government itself is responsible for proposing changes to the central government and our governing system. What if it's the problem? And the delegates who remain to the end unanimously supported his proposal. And it was later cited. It was later cited by Madison himself in Federalist 43. It was later cited by Alexander Hamilton himself in Federalist 85. More, in terms of modernity, was cited by Everett Dirksen. A Republican minority leader from Illinois. No great conservative, but a tremendous orator. It was cited by Dwight Eisenhower. I believe it was 1961. After he left the presidency, he realized what was happening to the federal government, particularly through the courts. It was cited by Ronald Reagan as a threat because he couldn't get a balanced budget amendment through the United States Senate and the House. It was cited by Milton Friedman who said it's the only way. And yet it's never discussed. Not even by conservatives. Instead, day after day, day in and day out, we go through these ridiculous arguments. The liberal agenda is pushed through the news. We respond to the liberal agenda. We defend our guys and our gals against the liberal onslaught. We read editorials out of the Washington Compost and the New York Slimes, papers that are hostile to constitutionalism and despise each and every one of us. Instead, day in and day out, we wrestle with ourselves. Day in and day out, we debate the left's agenda. Day in and day out, the left's agenda is America's agenda. And I'm saying once and for all, we think for ourselves, we think outside the box, we take our republic back. And the framers of the Constitution and the ratifiers of the Constitution told us how to do it. I'll be right back. 